I am so okay. Great. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for coming back to our Inova Solutions live every Wednesday at one o'clock Eastern Standard Time for Jamaica and two o'clock uh, Eastern Standard Time, I think it is for Curacao, Puerto Rico, and others. Thank mm -hmm. you so much for being here with us today. Please, in the comments, let us know where you're from. If you're from Jamaica, Puerto Rico, Ecuador, Curacao, the Netherlands, if you're from China, wherever you're from, the US, you're from, please let us know if you're hashtag team live or hashtag team replay. We have a huge replay following apparently. Oh. Um, so feel free, yes, yeah. <laughs> to let us know um, where you're from and also uh, what you prefer, if you prefer to come on the live. I am Lacia Holmes Graham and I'm the Regional Customer Success Manager for Inova Solutions. And with me today, it is my pleasure, it is my pleasure to introduce the Executive Director of the Transformation Implementation Unit, Maria Thompson Walters. She is our first customer guest this week in our fifth live, and we're very excited to have her. Um, so Maria, just tell us a bit about yourself, and then we'll just get into the nice and exciting <laughs> one more. Okay, so my least favorite subject, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, so a little bit about me. Um, I'm an HR practitioner. All my, my career, I've been in human resource management. Um, although I have my first degree is in communications and, um, and management, not in HR at all. And uh, my second, my postgraduate diploma is in public sector management. Wonderful. Wonderful. I've worked in the public sector for going on 15 years. I left, I went to the private sector. I went to work with um, one of our telecommunications companies and then um, came back to the public sector and took on the role of managing public sector transformation. But managing public sector transformation with a digital foundation. Amen, wonderful, that's that's very exciting. So, yes. wow, I it's really a pleasure to have you here. And Thank thanks you. for telling us your background, very interesting, communications, <laughs> HR. It's so funny, mm -hmm. two weeks ago, we did have Danielle Tate, who heads up an organization and her focus was HR. And we had some really good conversation about the HR skills gap as well, and the fact that there's a lot of need for us to assist HR practitioners where technology is concerned. And I'm sure you're seeing that as well. Absolutely. Go ahead, go ahead. No, I was just gonna say, um, for HR, it's a little bit of a dichotomy because HR intuitively feels as if it should be such a personal um, function. And so it's difficult to see how you can use technology to deliver that level of personal service. That is a normal stamp of HR, but it can be done. Wonderful, wonderful. I want to touch on that at the end, right? Because sure. I didn't know that, but I want to touch on it because I think it's so important. As yes. you mentioned a while ago, HR is personal, but technology seems to not be personal. But in the conversation we had two weeks ago, we reminded everybody that technology is created by human beings. So there is a personal aspect to it. So I want to talk about the your, what you are leading as an executive, the advancement of our digital society. So, you know, there's this huge mandate the government has for advancing a digital society. But for a lot of the populace in Jamaica, um, in their minds, we are far from that, right? Um, and also, sometimes, because of the fact that a digital society may be viewed as maybe a concept like the Jetsons or something to that effect, <laughs> this understanding that digital advancement 
really just involves these simple steps. So the first um, question that I have for you is, now that you're leading that advancement, how are the ministries, divisions, and agencies taking on to this adaptation of technology as you work with them? Um, so I'm going to answer pre-COVID and post-COVID. All right. I like because, that. Because COVID is a defining moment for all of us. Very much so. Right? So the year 2020 was um, a, a year that lots of things went sideways. But a couple of things actually went um, went well, I think, in terms of our experience. Um, and just a correction: so not leading the digital uh, transformation of of the public of, of government, but certainly um, participating and leading a unit that is using um, the technology to effect transformation. And I think what we found when we just started is a focus on the cost of technology from the ministries and departments. But yes, this thing is great. It can do all of these things, but it costs a lot. And how do we keep up with that cost? You know, this is a public sector. We're not a private sector company. We don't have, you know, these huge revenue streams are constrained by budget, um, how do we keep up with that cost? So that was, that was sort of uh, part of the pushback that we, would have, we got when we just started. There was also um, a, a misunderstanding around technology. It was a lot about, well, this is going to um, decimate the workforce, persons are going to lose their jobs, uh, it's going to replace people. And then the other a sort of broad area for us is the public sector is really policy driven. And of course, the public sector operates within a legislative framework. And outside of that legislative framework, it is difficult to incorporate technology. So for example, a simple thing as using digital signatures in executing work. If the legislative framework does not allow for the use of digital signatures, then it is difficult for public officers to even incorporate that into their work. So we have to ensure that um, the digital, the, the legislative framework supports the use of technology. The platforms that we're building are in line with uh, things like our Data Protection Act, which was recently passed. We have amended um, our Financial Administration and Audit Act now to recognize digital signatures. So the legislation is moving along. And with that, you find persons relaxing a little more from a policy and a legislative perspective. But there's all, also a little bit of fear about the technology, who has access to the information, the security around all of that, um, you know, what happens if, 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 we lose access or we lose our data, you know, how do we recover? Those are the kinds of concerns that you would have heard coming up Understood. when we approach ministries first. Understood. Understood. Well, mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing that. And, and so I can very well imagine that those are conversations that you have to have with hard facts, hard evidence. Yes. And you mentioned something that was very critical government operates predominantly based on policy and legislature. So the reason that sometimes you may experience pushback is because there are legal ramifications Absolutely. for making a decision that does not align with a national effort. And I think that's very important to understand. Okay. Yes, yes. And, and for most pub public... Um, public services, you know, you have to move, you have to understand the legislative um, framework and you also have to be prepared to push for changes in that framework in order to move to where you need to be. And one of the things that we did, we had a little bit more flexibility because we are a project. Mm. So we took the decision to build um, our project 
on the back of technology. So we could not just go out and talk about it, we could demonstrate to our own operations what it was that they were missing. Because I think what ministries didn't realize, yes, technology has a cost, but there's also a cost to not use it. Ah, wonderful. I really love that point. And what I enjoy about working with you guys is, is you're really leading by example. You, in interacting with you guys, um, I see a lot of hunger and curiosity for the knowledge of how to apply the technology. Mm -hmm. um, there, you know, when we interact with you, there's no more stereotype. You know, people have these stereotypes yes. of, of public sector workers, which are totally unfair, I find, at times, where mm -hmm. you know, there's no customer service, the persons don't understand these things. But what we're finding is that you guys are changing the status quo. Absolutely. You're using the power platform, you're leveraging the technology in a real and deep application way, and then communicating that with others as well so that they can understand, as you said, the cost of not using it. Exactly. Awesome. So, uh, so the next question that I have is what are the top three areas of need that you're seeing from the ministries, divisions and agencies? When they talk to you, yes, these are the concerns yes. that they have and the barriers. But when they come to you and they say, okay, you know, thanks Whoa. for letting us know that you're doing all these great things. That's <laughs> you guys. You yes. know, <laughs> that's you. You guys can do that. I can do that. But yes. in order for them to move it along, what do they need from you in order to be able to to reach to where you guys are or go on that journey so i think um for, for most of the ministries and departments they first of all require an understanding an understanding of what we mean when we talk about an integrated ict system serving the needs of the organization um you know persons use different areas if you look at the Microsoft suite of products, you know, some persons have Word, some persons have the full suite, some persons only have pieces of the suite. And so, and they have never experienced um, sort of that, the, the Microsoft Office product in, in an integrated way, along with the various other applications that you can layer onto it and produce the kinds of things that they, they, they would want. And so what we've done Again, example is, I think, the best teacher. And not only that, it also um, serves to drive ambition, I would say. So a permanent secretary might say, well, you know, I need to pull reports in order to do, you know, update the minister, or I need these things on a faster basis. It takes me three weeks or it takes me three months to get a view of. And, and what we do is we use the systems that we're rolling out, pull those reports for them, or even create reports that they never knew they needed. So, and, and, and demonstrate to them what it is that they can get. So we are rolling out a system um, for the management of HR. And for, for some of the entities that are on that system now, we've been able to pull from their HR data and provide the head of the ministry with reports on... Um, the age profile, the um, gender profile of the, the ministry. We look at their senior management group. We look at the generational mix in the ministry. Mm. We show them how it is that, you know, you, you, you may realize that there is a struggle between senior management and the junior staff. But when you look at the generational mix, that provides some explanation of why we're having that kind of push and pull in the organization. Yeah. And we're able to show them these things and they are, um, and these things that we produce in a day. It doesn't take us three months searching through files to get data to do this. Um, so, so I think the top three things that they need um, that they look for is an understanding of really how it can help, certainly at the senior levels in the organization. They also want to understand the cost of, of doing this. And when we talk to them about the cost of doing this, as I say, we don't only speak about how much it's going to cost you to purchase the system and implement it. 
but also how it is going to to cost you if you don't right right and um how can it make my work easier 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 how can it make my my ministry more effective right right and i'm so glad that you're using the word effective because I yes that over the past couple of years there was more of a focus on efficiency right so you can be and i learned this from um <laughs> of mine you can be efficient at the wrong thing absolutely so effectively <laughs> being efficient at what you're supposed to be doing at what you're supposed to be doing or your role and how you contribute to the organization that you're sitting in so that's, absolutely right so that's that's really great and yeah. i really appreciate the fact that you guys play such a critical role in terms of assisting person in understanding the technology not only that but the cost of it and then the cost to not oh, no. the cost to not and, and you mentioned the pandemic which has brought to the fore that conversation right. in a more expedited way yes. right and i find that no i'm sure we're all seeing it there is a huge demand for it and for the persons who made the transition before uh, like you guys, I remember one of mm -hmm. our team members had mentioned to us that there was really no change for your organization in terms of how you worked. You were already working in an agile way, in a hybrid yes. manner. And so adjusting in the pandemic scenario made sense for you. And so yes. that example was just fine and it was shown and a lot of other ministries, divisions and agencies, I'm sure, are benefiting from that. So we spoke about some of the barriers. We spoke about that. I, I really want to understand, though, what... So now that you're moving forward, you're having mm -hmm. rich conversations. There's there's more clarity around yes. the reasoning associated with why technology is not being adapted in the way that it should be. Mm -hmm. So we have the answers to the questions that we need that we've been discussing for, uh, I think, over half a decade, right? So yes, no, at least. Right, right? Or, <laughs> or probably more for or those. Probably like, more, exactly. Been, right? So now yes. that we're here, what's next? What's next for um, you guys as the Transformation Implementation Unit? And then what can Jamaicans look forward to and what can the world look forward to? Because from my understanding, you are a part of the conversation associated with the government advancing critical areas of government from a shared services perspective. Absolutely. So um, in relation to what, 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 what the country can look forward to, um, you know, COVID really hit us, hit us hard, not only at the level of technology, but also infrastructurally. So, you know, you have persons who our connectivity is not as um, robust as we would as we would want it to be. And you have areas in the country where connectivity itself um, is difficult at the best of times. Right. And one of the things that we are working um, towards is to complete what we call GovNet which is the fiber ring around the KMA to enable a public sector um, platform on which we can deliver ICT services right. for the citizens of the country. Right. A platform that is secure, has all of the redundancies that it needs, and that is en and will enable ministries and departments to share data um, work collaboratively in a digital space without having to get up from your office, drive to another office to a meeting, um, so you can work collaboratively. And I don't mean now sitting at Teams meeting all day. I mean work collaboratively in a digital space. You're working on the same documents. You can be um, collaborating on things, um, creating things in that digital space, in a secure space. So, so we're working and building out um, that uh, we call it GovNet for the public sector. 
we are also focusing on the introduction of shared corporate services, as you had mentioned. Um, shared services is taking um, the administrative and operational areas of certain functions in government and conducting those services through a single organization on behalf of government. And again, this is technology driven. Um, we utilize, we spoke about my HR plus, that deals with HR management. It also deals with payroll, um, our finance and account systems, all of those operational areas in procurement, finance and accounts, payment of suppliers, um, HR operations, payroll operations, all of those will be delivered through a shared services operation. Um, we use case management, uh, we have chatbots, we're developing chatbots for our customers. Um, we have ticket, we have our ticketing system, an entirely online built organization. Wow. And, and I'll tell you, I'll share something with you. Sure. Just when the second wave of COVID hit, we started the pilot for internal audit and, and um, HR shared services. And we were a little cautious because it was brand new to the persons working in the area. And so we didn't want to send them to work from home. But you know, the more we continued, we were like, hmm, everything is there to enable work from home, or I call it work at home. So let's see how the shared services will operate. So new service, new clients, new employees, never worked this way before. Not one of our clients realized that we were not working from brick and mortar. We, that that the, all of every single one of our agents were working from home, and none of our clients realized. Wow, wow, that's so, really so, amazing. So, so that you know, and we intend to continue to build the shared services in that way. Wonderful. So, which enables the public sector now to focus on take take away all of that administrative work. And so they can focus on their core businesses and providing what I call citizen-focused customer service. Customer right. service. Yes. Citizen services, right. Yes. Well, that's citizen-focused. Citizen-focused citizen customer service. Okay. And I say it that way because the, the entities that we're working with, we want to work with them to re-engineer some of their processes, including how they interface with their customers. But then in re-engineering those processes, it's ensuring that those processes are built on the needs of their customers. So if the customer wants the service digitally, we can provide it to them digitally. If they want to walk into the um, service provider, they can walk into the service provider. And they, there should be no change in the level of customer service that they have. Oh, that's wonderful. So it really comes back down to being a civil servant. Absolutely. Service, right? Absolutely. It just comes back down to being a civil servant, serving your customer and focusing exactly. on that first and then identifying, okay, how can I use the technology to enable me to serve, to the, serve. Citizens of the nation? That's yeah. really amazing. Maria, yes. I am just really, you know, as a Jamaican, I definitely have to share how joyful it makes me to have worked with you guys on this and how proud Inova Solutions is to be working with you guys on this effort on a national level. Um, it is exceedingly exciting to see how public sector is changing its view on how they serve people, how they serve the nation. And I think you guys are a great example. Um, I know that you guys benefited very strongly from our adoption sessions as well, with for oh, yes. the, as well as the Office 365 technology. And you guys were always hungry, asking a lot of questions, very engaged. And it is extremely pleasing to see that you guys are advancing the use of technology across the country in this way. 
and it, it really gives us a lot of hope it does um to see yeah. that we as jamaicans are able are able to make the change that we so desperately are yeah. asking for absolutely and it is it is a joy to see and yeah. i have to commend you and the team yourself richard danville annie k and the <laughs> rest of the team um, yes. I believe there's also some other persons that I would have known from different entities. Thank you all, because being a civil servant is difficult. I think a lot of persons don't Thank understand you. how difficult it is. It to is. <laughs> right? Um, and I really just want to thank you guys. Um, yes. As we close out, is there anything that you'd like to share specifically in how we've served you? Um, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so we suffer from the same thing too. We hire uh, project managers from all over, and, and including persons who came to us from the public sector. And quite a number of persons were really cautious about the technology. Um, and, and you have been so patient with all of our team members in terms of you know, the training, the adoption sessions, um, now I feel like I need a refresher because everybody now knows more than I do. I, I don't think we would have been able to do some of, I'm pretty sure we wouldn't have been able to do some of the things that we've done um, because with our shared services to pivot for persons to work from home, we used the full power of teams. I don't think people understand the full power of teams. We created meeting rooms. People had their own whiteboards. They had their, it was like, a, their meeting room was like an office. It was always open. So the teams could move in and out of the office. It's, we really adapted that technology to serve the purposes and to get our, our um, colleagues comfortable. And that could not have taken place without the help that you gave us. And um, I would encourage anybody at all um, Office 365 is a fantastic tool and this is not an ad, this is just the truth. It is a fantastic tool. Um, but the support that you get from um, Inova Corporation is really what turns it on for you. I mean, don't believe because you've been using Microsoft for the last 50 years or 20 years or however <laughs> long. Like, yeah, man, this is a breeze. Absolutely not. If you want to turn on the power, of Office 365, yeah, you need the support of INOVA. And so I thank you because you were there when we were building this and you helped us build it right. So today we can sit here and have persons say to us, well, you know, we want what you have. And we can say, yeah, because we got, we, we followed in the right direction. So thank yeah. you. Thank you're you, thank welcome. you, thank you. You're welcome, and thanks to the team because it's a team effort. It's not just me; it's definitely the team, yes. locally and regionally as well. And it is a pleasure to serve you. Um, a previous CIO who was here in Jamaica mentioned <laughs> that it was very important for us to turn from a culture of entitlement to a culture yes. of service. And I think that once you are serving your customers and your citizens, you can always do well. Um, thank you. Maria, thank you so much uh, for joining us today. Um, we appreciate this. Everyone who joined, thanks for being on. It will be available on YouTube. <laughs> you can review it um, and feel free to send us questions, email us anything. If you'd like to get in touch with Inova, you can always go to our website. You can find us on LinkedIn, follow us everywhere, and also follow us on YouTube as well. And thank you, Maria and team, for thank joining you. us. Thank you for leading the change that we need in our country. Yeah, thanks a lot. <laughs> All right. Bye. Good afternoon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.